morning, Chairperson. Uh, today I want to talk about the timing of uh, mitral valve surgery, which is a very common uh, finding and a very important to topic to talk about. And I start with the uh, with the timing of the repair, the scope of the lesions for the group of patients who have a mitral valve regurgitation on top of native valve and the mitral valve stenosis on top of a native valve. So prosthetic valve is not included in this lecture. And now I have no disclosure. My agenda starts with why timing is important and uh, then I will scope on the mitral valve regurgitation, quantify the severity and what the European Society of Cardiography and European Society of Cardiology guideline try to send a message on mitral stenosis, what to do, and finally the home message. Why timing is essential in mitral valve regurgitation? This graph could give the answer. And what we have here, we have the onset of severe mitral valve regurgitation. Okay, the onset of severe mitral valve regurgitation, and if you late to have the decision of optimal time surgery, you will cause a left ventricle dilatation, you will develop a cardiac arrhythmia, Dr. Ali Shukran. You will develop a cardiac arrhythmia, and then you finally terminate with the symptoms that could end with the, with the mortality. So you have to know when to interfere exactly. And this graph here will show us if we left the patient with the medical treatment only, this is class 1 and class 2, and this is class 3 and 4, if we left the patient on medical treatment only, you can see how much is the reduction in the survival rate. He couldn't survive for a long time, just four years in a mean. And on the other hand, if I did the operation for a patient or I start medical treatment for a patient with ejection fraction was less than 60, I would expect a very similar results. Ejection fraction around 60 is not good in patient with a mitral valve regurgitation. Let's see here, if I pick a surgery in ejection fraction more than 60, I would expect a 73% survival improvement. But if I delayed my patient when the ejection fraction become less than 50, the, the survival rate would fall down to less than 30% of cases. Now according to this picture and these graphs, we can conclude that the medical treatment has no role in patients with chronic primary severe mitral valve regurgitation. So the, the dominance is for the surgery. And now to understand the mitral regurgitation, we have to pay attention for for this graph, which which known as apparatus, mitral valve is not just a leaflet. Mitral valve is apparatus, and that apparatus is made of leaflets, cordae, annulus, papillary muscle, and the wall of the of the left ventricle. Any abnormality in this will lead to abnormality in form of mitral valve regurgitation. The, the the lesion that affect the leaflet, thickening, aneurysmatic, mycotic aneurysm, for example, perforations, vegetations, all of these could lead to a primary cause of mitral regurg, while a problem here in the papillary muscle or the, under, or the underneath uh, muscle is a uh, secondary type of mitral valve regurg. Why should I understand that? Because this is will help us to classify mitral valve regurg. I have a primary, I have a secondary, and this is the mechanisms according to Kaventa classification of the mechanism of mitral valve regurgitation. Is it essential to differentiate the primary from the secondary? The answer is yes, definitely. And why we have to differentiate? Because the primary patient could get benefit from surgery, while the secondary need for a surgery in very, very limited list of different of list of indications. Assessment of mitral valve regurgitation by doing echocardiography set it down and identification of anatomy, then the color color flow, color doubler and C and CW. And from this slide you can understand some measurements that we have to apply in echocardiography to identify the group of patient who has a severe mitral valve regurgitation. So this is a primary patient with the uh, a mitral valve regurgitation. The view here is the fourth chamber view, and you can see there is a thickening on the mitral valve leaflets. There is a jet of regurgitation. The jet of regurgitation here looks eccentric. So this is a primary mitral valve with severe regurgitation. The second step after the quantification, this is another example for a patient with the uh, uh, mesoesophageal fourth chamber view. This is a transesophageal echocardiography. There is a prolapsing of the of the both leaflets, but mainly affected the posterior leaflets. And here you can see the regurgitant jet 
opposite to the direction of the male affected leaflet. And this is the 3D. You can see the scalop of A2 is, or sorry, B2 is prolapsing, sponging. This is the atrial side of 3D. And now, according to the data I've mentioned, we have a mitral valve repair as a first recommendation uh, if a patient is in good center with expected to be durable. And the surgery is recommended in symptomatic patient. It's a class one. Surgery is recommended in asymptomatic patient with the ejection fraction less than 60, and we know why, and those with the left ventricle and systolic dimension more than 40. But we have another group that we have to pay attention. Those who have uh, uh, left ventricle ejection fraction still less more than 60, and their end systolic is less than 30 to 40. It means that their heart is still normal. So why should I send them to do a surgery and they are asymptomatic? Because they developed atrial fibrillation. And once they develop atrial fibrillation or they have increase in pulmonary hypertension, it's a class 2A to send asymptomatic patient with good heart to do a cardiac surgery. And uh, this is what the guidelines try to tell us. If you have a symptomatic patient, it's a long, it's a long, long one. I don't go through all of these, but I want to pay attention if you have Symptoms, if you don't have a symptoms here, try to be sure that patient is truly not symptomatic because many patients give you an impression that they are asymptomatic but they are symptomatic. If they are not, try also when you reach to the part, part, branch to follow up to send the patient for another imaging modalities including the stress, ECG and cardiac CMR to quantify the symptoms. Surgery timing in secondary mitral valve regurgitation is a little bit challenging because doing a cardiac surgery for a patient with secondary dilated cardiomyopathy may be not a wise choice. You need to pay attention for the following points. This is a patient with a DCM. This is a mitral valve regurgitation here. And if you try to, to change this valve, patient will not get a benefit. So you have to start, you have to start with the with the recommendation from the guideline, the only recommendation for the class one for a patient with a mitral valve regurgitation to do a surgery is that he has a, a cabbage or other cardiac surgery. So you're going to do something for that severe mitral valve regurgitation, otherwise you would not touch it. Now the second indication that you used all weapons to manage a patient with the mitral valve regurgitation, to manage the patient with a primary dilated cardiomyopathy or ischemic cardiomyopathy, you, you, you give do CRT, you give the GDMT, you optimize the medications, you, you did everything you want to do, but he's still not improving. In such situation, you think about the valve surgery intervention. And the best strategy in such group of patients is not just the direct replacement, but we try to think about the tier, which is the uh, uh, mitral clap. This is the guideline, and I want also to pay attention for this point. Patient here with secondary mitral valve regurg, I start to give the GDMT, and then here in this point, along this long pathway, I will pay attention for this point. Patient with an end stage left ventricle and right ventricle failure, and he has secondary severe mitral valve regurgitation, the best strategy of management is palliative care, not to send patient for cardiac surgery, especially if it's uh, uh, primary DCM, not secondary to the ischemia. On the other aspect, if you could figure out the presence of ischemic lesion, that need for a cabbage, you could get benefit from cabbage and mitral valve surgery in the same time as a class one indication according to the recommendation I have mentioned. Now, this is another example for a patient with the uh, severe mitral valve stenosis. And you can see here, the default strategy for a management of patient with a severe mitral valve stenosis is the balloon. So you're going to do a commercial atomy. But sometimes you have some contraindications that contraindicate the balloon. So you should send the patient to do a cardiac surgery. And these are the following. Here you can see a severe mitral valve regurgitation. This patient is contraindicated for a balloon, mitral balloplasty. And here also another example. This is a patient with a severe mitral valve stenosis. Here the leaflet looks more thickened with a slight flaring of the posterior leaflet. 
And here you have a picture of uh, hypertensive uh, pulmonary hypertension, positive D-shaped sign. This is the tricuspid valve, pulmonary hypertension is high. This is not a contraindication to do a balloon in spite of the presence of high uh, uh, risk during the uh, balloon valvuloblasty. And here you can see one of the uh, big uh, contraindication to do balloon, which is a presence of uh, a, a big thrombus inside the left atria. When you try to play in this area in order to insert the balloon and start the process of inflation, this mass could short and cause a, a, a complication. So this is one of contraindication for balloon and strong indication for cardiac surgery. This is the summarization for a severe mitral valve stenosis with area less than 1.5 and patient is uh, symptomatic and you have a contraindication for percutaneous uh, mitral commissurotomy. You're going to go through the pass, the pass through the pathway of surgery. The home message, uh, I want all of us to keep in mind that the primary mitral regage secondary, secondary is recommended for symptomatic patient or if patient is asymptomatic but he has left ventricle dysfunction, pulmonary hypertension or atrial fibrillation, think about surgery. Secondary mitral valve surgery is not our option. Sometimes you need it for a particular group of patient who, who has a, a complete failure of our women and strategies, GDMT and CRT. And finally, mitral valve st uh, stenosis surgery is recommended when the percutaneous mitral commissurotomy is not feasible or contraindicated. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Al-Khadar Al-Kalimi. Thank you very much.